Yes, I mean the simplest way to really understand what's going on in Turkey is that we are seeing a struggle uh, domestically uh, for the improvement of, of the democratic standards. Turkey's problem has been that even though uh, there has been a, a democracy, uh, Turkey switched to multi-party democracy 60 years ago, earlier than Spain even, uh, Turkey has still not been able to make the jump like Spain did uh, with its accession to the EU towards a, a genuine uh, liberal form of democracy. And that is what we're seeing uh, in, in Turkey today. Uh, these are the problems associated uh, with the improvement in democratic standards, uh, where we see an accumulation of uh, centralized power, uh, the prime minister and the executive uh, becoming too strong, uh, and basically weakening uh, Turkey's institutions uh, and the checks and balances uh, that, uh, that exist in the constitution. So essentially this is a reaction against um, an extreme form of power that's been accumulated by the executive and in particular by Prime Minister Erdogan. That's really been the reaction over the summer, um, the disaffection of Turks towards this type of uh, majority rule, very paternalistic approach of the Turkish Prime Minister. Uh, and, and also uh, what we have seen more recently uh, is really uh, the, uh, the difficulties that Turkey has had with regard to the functioning of some of its core institutions, in particular the judiciary and the police. Uh, so uh, essentially, if you really want to have a more simplistic understanding of what's going on in Turkey, uh, is really uh, to look at this from the viewpoint of uh, the struggle towards building uh, a more uh, a better, uh, a more liberal form of democracy uh, and we're certainly not there yet so all the problems associated with the struggle are now resurfacing uh, we see it in the form of the, in the, of the lack of the independence of the judiciary, we see it in the form of uh, restrictions on press freedoms, restrictions on the freedom of association, uh, and a low threshold for uh, tolerance to dissent. These are all the ills uh, that are now part of the Turkish democracy, and that is why there is a lot of tension in the country between the constituencies that want to improve Turkey's standards um, and the, uh, essentially the executive authority uh, that sees this improvement as a threat uh, for its power. Already on the economic side we have seen some of the negative impact of this uh, power struggle uh, because uh, some of these principles, namely the independence of the judiciary, the ability of the uh, state structures to really fight against corruption uh, have been handicapped by the recent development. So there's increasingly a concern that uh, with, with regard to the problems associated with the rule of law in Turkey, uh, also concern with regard to the functioning of the judiciary. And all of this uh, tend to decline business confidence, uh, not only domestically, but also from an international perspective. So Turkey is viewed, rightly or wrongly, as a more risky country. Uh, where political stability is at stake and this is certainly bad, uh, certainly gives uh, a, or it tarnishes Turkey's image uh, as a, a strong economic powerhouse uh, in southeastern Europe. Now the political impact of what we've discussed uh, is certainly going to be visible very soon because Turkey has, will have local elections on the 30th of March uh, even though these are local elections, so it's not national elections, uh, it is now certain that these local elections will be portrayed and construed as a, a referendum on the government, as a referendum on the ability of Prime Minister Erdogan to lead the country. So uh, the outcome of these local elections will very much determine the short-term uh, path of Turkish politics. It will certainly uh, determine whether Erdogan himself uh, will like to uh, become uh, a candidate for the presidential elections that is slated for the summer, or whether, on the contrary, he will desist from being a candidate and will try to continue as the country's prime minister. 
uh, and not present himself at the presidential elections. So there is a lot that hinges on these local elections, and they have now acquired an importance that goes, you know, way beyond uh, the local elections as such. Well, let me start with Syria. Uh, Syria, the way that uh, the Syrian situation has evolved. Uh, remains a major concern for Turkish policymakers because Ankara, Turkey was one of the uh, lead countries uh, that has openly militated for regime change in Syria that at some point in time uh, wanted to have an inter inter international intervention to get rid of the Assad regime that still continues to be Ankara's official policy, although now there is a realization, uh, there is a, if you want, a more realistic understanding of what the international community is prepared or is not prepared to do. Uh, but that leaves Turkey with a major concern uh, because uh, Turkey is the country that is most exposed to the ongoing stability in Syria. It is exposed by way of the uh, increasing flow of refugees. Today, Turkey officially hosts about 700,000 Syrians, uh, probably more uh, given the unofficial figures. Uh, the government disclosed that the spending of the Turkish government now amounts to about $2 billion uh, for these refugees. But even beyond the material cost of caring for those refugees, there are security issues there. Uh, Turkey is also extremely concerned with the rise of extremism uh, in, in Syria, in some of the unruled spaces in Syria. Uh, that can have a very bad impact on Turkey as well. So overall, that, is a very, that remains a very problematic issue. Uh, and, uh, but the official policy on the Turkish side remains that there cannot be a solution to the Syrian problem uh, unless uh, Assad is forced to leave. The question is, how is that going to be uh, engineered? Uh, who is going to do that? Because the situation on the ground, on the contrary, uh, seems to reassert uh, Assad's, Assad's hold on power. Now, moving beyond Syria, uh, Egypt is another case where Turkish policy is at difficulty because the Turkish government uh, has associated itself somewhat uh, too deeply with the Muslim Brotherhood. The relationship between the Turkey's ruling party, AKP, and the Brotherhood uh, were good, remain good. The relationship between Erdogan and Morsi as well. Uh, so the Turkish position on that uh, was that uh, there has been a coup in Egypt and the international community should stand against that coup. That the legitimate government of Egypt is the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and uh, the, the reality action should be to start uh, to ask for the, uh, for the legitimate government uh, to come back into power. Now obviously that is not where the international community is uh, and therefore Turkey once more, uh, just like in Syria, is pretty much isolated in terms of its reaction to what happened in Egypt. Now that reaction certainly is built on high moral ground uh, by trying to or by uh, portraying what happened in Egypt as a coup. But nonetheless, many Egyptians perceive Turkey's uh, approach to be too militant, that uh, the Turkish government has taken too much uh, the side of the, of the Muslim Brotherhood. And instead of caring for a, a transition uh, and in caring for the future of democratic rule in Egypt, uh, the image that uh, Turkey has projected uh, for some of the Egyptians is a government that cares more about the fate of the Muslim Brotherhood than the fate of uh, a, the democratic rule in Egypt. So that's really been the, uh, the predicament uh, of the Turkish approach, approach um, uh, to Egypt. Uh, with regard to um, the Middle East peace process, uh, Turkey at one point in time, up until 2008 really, had played an invaluable role uh, by being able to bridge uh, the uh, differences uh, between the countries, between Israel and Palestine, but also between the different Israeli, uh, the Palestinian factions between uh, Hamas and Fatah, for instance. Now, Turkey lost that privilege uh, increasingly as its relationship with Israel deteriorated. Uh, and therefore, now it's not the type of player that it once was, that it once was uh, in relation to the Mid Middle East peace process. Now, there is an ongoing negotiation with Israel to normalize the relationship. Uh, and if that succeeds, maybe perhaps gradually uh, Turkey can try to recover uh, the influence that it has lost.